Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here, and today we are going to have some fun with fun. Actually, the word fun we're going to have a lot of fun with because we're going to create this kind of really cool inflated look, very much like a balloon, like those metallic bl uh, balloons you see. We're going to make those entirely here in Photoshop using 3D in Photoshop CS6 Extended. It's a lot of fun, and one of the really cool things you can do um, one of the many cool things you can do with 3D and just uh, experiment and have some fun with text. So here I have, again, I said I've got the word fun here typed out, and it's a very fun font called Bellbottom right up here. I actually got this at um, dafont.com. It's D-A-F-O-N-T.com. And they've got a lot of really cool, fun, freaky fonts on there, and this one is no exception. It's a lot of fun. So that is why I chose it. I can't say fun enough in this tutorial, so I'm going to stop. So let's go ahead and turn this text into some shiny balloons, inflated balloons here. So the first thing is actually going to go ahead and give it a color. Let's make these balloons red. Now we don't have to stick with red. We can certainly change it later on after we've created them. But for now, we'll go ahead and start with this nice red base. So we'll go over here into the 3D menu and go down here and choose new 3D extrusion from selected layer. Now we'll go ahead and create a 3D extrusion of that text, and if I move it around, you can see it's not only in, um, extruded it, but it's also generating a shadow on the ground plane. Well, we need to make some changes here. So I'm actually just gonna rotate my view here so I can see what's going on. And let's open up the 3D panel and the properties panel. Need both of these because we're going to make some changes to this text. Now, the first thing is I'm gonna go ahead in the 3D panel here and select the word that contains the type itself. So this is the 3D layer for fun. And I said fun again, sorry. Over here in the properties panel, we're gonna go and take the extrusion depth down to around two. Maybe even thin, let's just go to one, why not? Thin as possible right there. Now the shadow I don't need at all because if these are gonna be balloons, then they wouldn't actually be sitting on a surface. So let's go ahead into the environment settings and go ahead and bring that opacity, the shadow opacity to here down to zero. So there the shadow goes away. Now we're going to inflate our balloons. With that text layer selected, reselected here in the 3D panel, we're going to jump over here to the properties panel and click on the third icon over, which is the cap settings right here, as you see up on the top of the panel here. Now go down here to the inflate section and go ahead and take the strength all the way. Now don't take it all the way up there. Let's just bring it up a little bit and we'll bring the angle all the way out and just kind of inflate it a little bit more there. And you can see it just kind of balloons it out there appropriately enough. We'll go too far. We'll go out to right about there. But notice I've got the angle setting all the way maxed out to 90%. And if I rotate this around, you can see it's inflating it nicely out of the front. However, it's not going coming out of the back side of the uh, balloon itself. So all you need to do is go up here in the properties panel once again. And here where it says sides, instead of it just being the front, go ahead and do front and back. And there you have the balloon fully inflated. So you can see why this font led to this looking more like balloons. If you decided to use a regular squared font, it wouldn't look as good. So you need something that's nice and well-rounded like this to be able to give you that kind of a balloony look to it. So if I rotate it, rotate it around here, you can see it's got kind of a cool thing happening there. But it doesn't quite look like a balloon yet. It still needs to have that kind of shiny look um, that you would expect these kind of balloons to have. So let's uh, again go into the 3D panel and select the front inflation material. And over here in the properties panel, we're gonna go ahead and bump up the shine to 100% and the reflection, and eh, we don't need the reflection quite as much. Let's start with around 75 for the reflection. And the roughness I'm gonna set at a very low number at around five. So it doesn't necessarily give me a complete mirrored reflection, but rather softens it up just a little bit. So. That's really all, honestly what this feature should be called. It should be called softness instead of roughness. That kind of uh, is misleading in a way, in my opinion. But that's okay. But now you can see what's going on. The default image-based light is now showing up in this surface now. Now to see that, you jump over to the environment settings once again where we adjusted that shadow. But further up in the panel, we see the IBL, which is the image-based light. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new document altogether. So it's going to click on the folder icon here and choose new texture. And it's going to go ahead and ask me, hopefully, what kind of file I want to create. And there we go. Ooh, I got nervous there for a minute. 
So I'm going to go ahead and create and just use the, the same dimensions as the document itself. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And it fills it with white, so it completely blows out my subject there. So we're going to go here and edit the texture. Press Command or Control I, and that's going to invert the values, making the background black. Now the only thing we're going to add is a simple elliptical marquee over here on this side over here. It doesn't really matter where you put it. I'm just putting it over here on this side of the image. And I'm going to fill that with a very dark gray color. If you fill it with white, it's going to really blow out on the image and we don't necessarily want that. So I'm going to open up my swatches panel here under the window menu and go ahead and choose this kind of dark gray swatch right here, which if you hover over it will reveal that it is in fact 80% gray. So I've got that selected. I'm going to Option Delete, fill that selection with that gray color, close the document, save the changes, and there you can see now I've got a rather more interesting glare on my text. Now if I go and keep that environment setting highlighted here in the 3D panel, I can click on the object and move that light around. You can see right there. There it is. And it looks pretty good. Now if you do a quick render, It'll smooth it out. It's actually kind of in draft mode right now. So if we go in the 3D menu again, and this time choose render, it'll start to do a little bit of render on that. And now that looks a little bit more realistic. Now, not only is it softening up that environment reflection we've added, but also it's reflecting the other letters. Notice in the sides here, it's reflecting that. So what we could do, if you feel like you want those glares a little bit brighter, which I think I do, I'm going to go back inside that texture and just quick and dirty, let's go ahead and use the magic wand tool and select that oval shape. And we will reopen our swatches panel and just get a slightly lighter gray color. Uh, let's go something like that. There we go. So a little bit lighter gray, close it, save the changes. And now we've got a little bit brighter glare on our text and I can move it around and have the, the light pretty much coming from any direction I want. We'll just have it kind of coming from the side there, there, something like that. Pretty cool. All right. So now it's still all one word. So if I go and move this text around, you can see it's inflated and looking pretty good. Notice the glare isn't showing up on the back side because we did not apply those uh, same surface properties to the back. We've only done it to the front inflation. If I wanted to have those same shining properties on the back side, we're not going to see them. But if in fact I wanted to, you would simply select the fun back inflation material and apply all those reflection and shine settings in here as well, because it treats each mesh individually. However, what I want to do is now split this up. So I'm going to have that object selected and then go into the 3D menu and choose split extrusion. Now it still keeps everything in one 3D layer. However, I can now click on each individual letter and move them around independently. And notice how it's going to behave differently with the lighting. And I can actually move these, you know, don't move them too close because they'll just like m merge into each other. But I can have them kind of bunched together like it, maybe it was a bouquet of balloons. And we just wanted to have them kind of floating in front of each other. Maybe we'll slide that in in front of the U here and then maybe just, and notice what I'm doing. I'm going in here and using each of these 3D tools to manipulate the positioning, not just up and down, left to right, but also front to back. So I brought this in a little bit far forward. I've maybe moved this one. We'll just rotate it a little bit there. And that background is white and it's really starting to bug me. So let's actually put a sky color in the background. So let's go and get our swatches and we'll put a blue color in that background. There we go. And then now again, I can move this object still as a whole if I select the object, but I can now also move them individually just by clicking on each individual one. And I can rotate it around. Notice where positioning there is. That U is a little bit too merging into that F a little bit. So we'll just kind of slide that forward and perhaps even scale it down slightly. There we go. But you can see this is where it really gets fun with 3D is that once you've gone through the process of creating your 3D objects and getting them in place, now you can have fun just manipulating them, moving things around and seeing what ultimately um, positioning you like. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do another render. Shift Option Command R and we'll see what we've got. So we've got, see those elements are reflecting in the letters. We've added 
our environment settings on this, and now we have some realistic balloon settings in here. And you know, with a little bit of tweaking on the surface properties, we can make this effect look more liquidy, almost like it's kind of like, you know, running paint, or in this case, because it's red, it could be blood. But there's all kinds of different things you can um, do with that. Now again, remember I started, we made the letters red, but let's say I wanted to change the color. Well, at this point, you would think, oh no, I've got to go back and redo it all. Not necessary. You can actually go in here. Now, it did split up the letters, so you will have to do each individual letter, but let's just say we wanted to change the color of the U, for instance. Well, all you have to do is simply go in there and select the front inflation in the properties panel here, click on that diffuse, and just go ahead and choose a different color. Let's get more of a green here. There we go. And maybe we'll change the F again, front inflation, make sure it's selected, and we'll change that color to, uh, we'll do maybe a bright yellow, there we go. And now it's turning into something very cool. And again, we'll just do another render. All those surface properties remain intact. All we did is simply change the colors, and there you have it. So again, one of the many, many things we're discovering with 3D here inside Photoshop. There's many more things to come. I hope you stay tuned. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you next time.